I'm excited. Okay, we're live. All right. All right. This is, um, my name is Lori Broccoloni. I'm an equine holistic practitioner, and I teach people how to be um, equine practitioners like myself and finding pain points on their horses and how to release them. And today we have Rhonda Royer. Is that, is that how you say it? Roar. Roar. With yeah. us today. And you've been a practitioner now for almost a year and a half, right? Yep, yep. Yes. Okay. And so what made you become an equine practitioner? Um, I enjoy working with animals, and I always wanted to do something with horses. Um, and then I found you, and it seemed like it was an easy thing to do, and... I thought, well, let's give it a try, and I did, <laughs> and I love it. Great, and so what is your favorite part about um, doing, you know, learning how to become a, you know, now that you, you're in your practice for a year and a half, what's your favorite part about being My a My favorite, favorite part is uh, seeing the results. The uh, owners rave about how good they turn out, how well they're moving, um, and they see it right away. Um, what about the horses? The horses move awesome, um, and you can see they're relieved, too, on the, on the pain point release, too. And you probably, but, you probably run across horses that you probably thought, oh, my God, you know, they're pretty pitiful. <laughs> And then after you do the pain point release, you're like, wow. Have you run across those? Yeah. Um, when I've come to a couple of them, they were, they were really out. And I thought, oh, man, you know, but I did what I had to do. And it, it, the results were unbelievable. I mean, so, I've seen, go ahead. I seen a difference in them before I even left, you know, left the barn. Um, some will start riding as soon as I leave, and I'll be able to see the results. Um, some will call me up later on and let me know how they're doing, and let me know, you know, they're moving better, and they just can't believe how good they are. And do they, do they, when they see you do it, do they feel like it's really, it looks too simple, and they, have they had other practitioners out, like vets and massage therapists and acupuncturists, even magnets and the laser wand and the energy work and acupuncture before they saw you? Yeah, I have a couple of them that had the chiropractor and the massage therapist out. Um, and then when I go out and I do the pain point release on their horse, um, I've had quite a few tell me that they've had better results with that with the pain point release than they did with the chiropractor or the massage therapist. Wow, that's amazing. That must make you feel really good. Yeah, it does. I don't know. Um, she was the, the one client, she was skeptical on it, so she only had me do her one horse first, and I believe she gave me her worst horse first. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you always do. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, probably within, well, the, about two days later, she called me up and wanted me to come down and do the rest of her horses. So that really made me feel good. Mm -hmm. good. So um, taking the course, I know you came down to see me, but yes. uh, you pretty much had it done when you saw me. I mean, you were pretty good about it. In fact, you were teaching that girl from California. But um, did you feel like the course gave you everything you needed? to learn the DVDs and the workbook and all that? Yes. Um, it's, it's real easy to follow. Um, it's just that you got to practice, you know. Um, I made myself some little cheat notes, you know, when I took along to do some of the horses, so I remember and, you know. Um, but it once you do a couple horses, you're good to go. You know, it's, it's real simple to pick up and do. Good, good. And so, what is the um, what is the challenges you have 
with the um, <laughs> your practice? <laughs> um, of course, with anything, proper nutrition and diet is. I always try to get them, you know, on a good nutrition and diet. Um, with that, I mean, I'm not a nutritionist or anything like that, but I see a lot of people giving them all kinds of supplements and, you know, doing all this other stuff, but if they would just go back to the basics, I think the horses would be better, um, and I don't think they would throw themselves out as much, you know, if they were on a proper diet. Right. Well, remember, there's... Um I think it's four things when um, when I first learned this from my mentor, Dr. Regan Golub, you know, I had a racehorse here that I was trying to race naturally and, um, you know, he was constantly out and I had him on like a really good supplement that cost an arm and a leg and he was right. on a natural diet. This is before the big sky and um, he was out. so. I asked Regan about that and he said that the main reason horses go out, they should hold their adjustments period. I call right. it, adjustments, but they, they should hold their pain points release. We won't call them adjustments. So their pain point release, they should hold them at all times really. Um, right. And so if they're, if they're out, then the, he said the first thing you look at is diet. And then when I learned about the big sky, that's when I learned that, oh my God, if the horse is 68% muscle mass, they need those connectors. Um, they're all nerves through those muscles and the bloodstream. They need magnesium and they need magnesium sulfate. And so when I discovered the big sky, it provided that and my horses have stayed in ever since I've had them on the big sky. It's just amazing. I don't know about yours, but um, your personal horses, but have you found that horses that are on the Big Sky stay in? Yes. Um, it's funny because um, I have a friend that he went on and he put his horse on Big Sky. Now, I have never done the, the pain point release on his horse. Um, and it's funny because he has his horse on the Big Sky, but his wife doesn't have her horse on it. And I went over to the barn to work on his wife's horse. And, of course, his wife's horse was out, you know. It's not on Big Sky. Um, and then while I was there, he figured, well, why don't you do my horse? Well, I checked his horse, and actually I really couldn't find any place that he was out. Because Isn't he was that crazy? Yeah. Isn't and that And my horses, yeah. Um, once I did the pain, pain point release on them and got them on the Big Sky, I haven't had to adjust them at all. Um, there is a couple of my other customers that uh, are on Big Sky, and they'll have me out to check their horses, and I still can't find too much that they're out. But you, you, but you do other things too. You do the Life Wave, and um, yeah. you do um, what else do you do besides the Life Wave? I work a little oh, bit with the acupressure course, didn't you? Didn't you take your acupressure course? I did do an acupressure course um, to learn the basics of the acupressure um, and to, you know, know where all those points are. Um, I do work with essential oils and, yes, I work with the um, AccuLife patches. Um, right. I find that sometimes those things come in handy. You know, I have a 28-year-old thoroughbred that I work on. Um, and I've done the pain point release adjustments on him, and he's on Big Sky. Um, but when I go out and check him for the pain point release, he's in. But yet, you know, he has minus my uh, minor arthritis and and that. So I might use some essential oils on that, or I'll use the AccuLife patches on him. Great, great, and also the apple cider vinegar too. I hope you yes. know just that. That helps. So that's great. That's wonderful. So it must feel really good to help all these horses so in, in like a short period of time. Yeah. Yeah. And it, um, in fact, I just did new customers last week, and they asked me how long I've been doing it. Um, and I said, well, a little over a year now. And she was like amazed. And um, she actually... 
she actually was checking to see if I could tell her where her horse was out or sore. Um, apparently, she had just had his hops injected not long ago. Right. And when I got when I got back to the hawk point to check that, he raised his leg up at me, and she looked at me and and I said, "Well, he's either got something going on with his hawks, you know, anything from below down his hawks, right, um, or he might need to have his teeth checked." And then she told me about him having hawk issues, and she was really surprised that I found that, you know, right. his on him. That's pretty amazing how the horse tells you what's wrong with him. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Well, also, also if, if anybody has any questions about why the hawks are, are, are um, depending on how old the horse is, um, you know, you have to look to the farrier for hawk issues. That's mostly it. Um, that's where I would go, number one. That would be the first place I would go is to the hawk. If the hawks are bothering them, I'd go to the farrier first. And um, the second thing I would do is probably see if they, they feed rice bran or bee pulp and it's tying up the minerals that can't get through there. Right. So I would use the life, I, I would assume you would use the life weight patches on them too for the hawks. Yeah. Yes. Great, great. So that's really exciting. I'm so happy. <laughs> I'm just like, you're helping how many horses? About a couple of horses a week, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, um, probably about, I'm, right now, um, I'm averaging about two or three a week. Um, Good. That's great. The, the, new yeah. ones did, the new ones I did last week, I went down to do two horses and ended up doing six <laughs> when I got down there. So. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. That's great. So, um, do you have any questions for me, for, you know, about any of the... Anything related to horses, or you know, I know um, you had that. Um, how'd that mare turn out? Did she listen to you about the uh, the hormones? I did not get the chance to talk to her, but she had talked about using um, uh, getting the is it the chassis berries? Chass tree berries. Those are the herbs. Yeah, she had said something to me about getting them prior to me asking you about her, um, but I have not asked, found out yet if she had gotten them yet. Right. Um, and I did tell her that I could also use the AccuLife patches on her when she does come into heat. Right. That would be a good idea. I would do that, and I explained to you about the source, because not all herbs are potent out there in the market. So... That's why I suggest two companies, and that's it. Those are the only two I can find that, you know, I've tried a lot of companies. Trust me, a lot of people send me a lot of products. And those two companies, um, TheHolisticHorse.com and Herbs of the World, they probably have the most potent herbs around. Mm -hmm. So, um, but that's in your Natural Equine Remedies book that you get as a bonus for being an equine practitioner. Do you use that book? Yes, I do reference back to it, yes. <laughs> Good. Has it helped you? Yes, it has. Um, especially like with the apple cider vinegar. Um, that That's working amazing. I mean, you know, I, um, especially on the older horses. I, you know, I'm seeing a big difference with them, with their arthritis and stuff. Um, with my guys, it's, you know, it does pretty good with them and... You know, um, I think the only question I would have would be about the ting points. Okay. I have not used the ting point points because I'm not exactly sure when and why. When would I would use them? The ting points. Did you see the latest video I sent out on that? Yes. Okay. I should have told you when to use it. Um, okay. It said, I said in there that if you have a horse, like mostly rescue horses or a horse that's, um, you're looking at, okay, I, I, I rate a horse like from a scale of one to, one to ten, okay? Ten being really good, okay? If that horse is at six, sixty percent of 
almost shutting down. He's underweight. He's got parasite. Who named Lyme's APM? Whatever. He's malnourished, um, or he's been like I just saw a horse in. Um, I just over Timonium. What's that place called? Um, Port Deposit. Seventeen years old. It was born and bred there. And I just posted the before and afters. You guys saw that last week. And he was stayed on the farm the whole time. Vaccines regular twice a year. Ivy Mectrum all the time. Big pop. I, I, you know I want to say that word. <laughs> You know, um, commercial GMO feed. I'll just say that. I won't say the yeah. key word. <laughs> and so, um, and he was shutting down. Okay, he was definitely shutting down. And so, with that, when you have a horse that's shutting down, I don't know if you've seen a horse like that, but their bellies are usually really swollen. Their back ends are really weak. Um, there's no hind end at all. They're just not digesting right. Um, I don't know if you could see that in the, the photo, but. Um, I mean, he turned over. I was surprised he turned over. But he had limes, and now her vet's saying it's got EPM, but whatever. Anyway, so, you know, then if a horse is shutting down, then you go to the ting points, and you have to stimulate them. I would put the life page wave patches on them. I would use your essential oils. Um, I don't know which company you use. I would use probably the DDR Prime or with Deterra or the Valor or um, probably the Valor with Young Living. Yeah, um, that's what I would use, and uh, to stimulate maybe if the horse is shutting down. And that front ting point that I showed you in that video is uh -huh. what um, really will open up the meridians all through. It's called the triple heater. So, okay. and that will bring. And then you have to teach the owner. Then you have to go through all the ting points if they're at sixty percent and below. Okay. Um, I've seen horses at forty percent with Regan. And to be honest with you, he did the best he could. He's, he's a miracle worker. A lot of people do a lot of stuff. All my practitioners, Dr. Ted Mortar and everybody. When you got a horse at 40 to 30 percent, you're lucky if you get that horse back. Yeah. You know, you're just, you're looking at night nights, you know, digging a grave. Right. So, right. But if you've got a horse at 60 and 50, you got a, you got a chance of helping that horse. And you have to be aggressive. You have to use your homeopathics. You have to use your natural diet. You have to like have that owner. They have to be on top of that horse 24/7. And this right. lady, fortunately, she was, and that horse turned around, which I was amazed. I was really amazed. So, um, I'm really excited about that. But that's how you use the ting points. So okay. you use those. You could use them um, if you have a horse too, which I've never come across, except maybe at the track. And that is if they're way overexcited. But you know to tap their eyes. Right. You know to give them the life wave or the lavender oil. Um, but the tapping of the eyes helps. You can go down and check the ting points on the triple heater and see if they're really above. You know, they're protruding out of the coronary band. Okay. So, um, what you want to do, I'm going to brighten this up and see if it helps. Because I'm gonna have to go turn on my. We have a segue here, so um, because my it's getting dark, I gotta turn on my light. Hold on. <laughs> We're gonna have thunderstorms tonight. Oh, here I, I just had one, so. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know if it's gonna come down here. Well, now it's. Let me go back to. There, that's better. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> um, but anyway, so. You want to see if they're if they're protruding out of the ting points, mm -hmm. then what you want to do is counterclockwise and bring them down, and that will sedate the horse. You can actually sedate a horse with the ting points okay. and ears. It's pretty okay. amazing. My my teacher used to stimulate right behind the ears up here, and um, a lot of people use those wands and everything. But yeah, I read a long time ago when uh, John Lyons used to have a newsletter come out. You know, mm -hmm. before the internet. <laughs> and um, I used to have subscribed to all his his newsletters. And you know, light pick therapy is good, and they're getting better and better with it. But in the old, you know, it's just you have you have you know in your fingertips you have thirty mega megahertz megahertz of energy in your fingertips, each of them. 
you can use your fingertips, you can use the LifeWay patches, you can use the vibrational of the oils, you know, you can, you can use all those to help sedate the horse a little bit. When you right. use light therapy, you know, I have to remember it's going to penetrate into the muscle. So, but you only, I would suggest using it lightly, you know, like over a period of maybe five days and not all the time because eventually, to me, in my opinion, and it makes sense, and I've seen it, will do nerve damage and eat up the nerves. So, Well, I haven't gotten into the light therapy stuff yet. Yeah, I, I have a light, and I yeah. used it on Dominic for his shoulder, and it, it seemed to help. But um, that laser wand, though, that, that thing is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, it, 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 it does something to the tissue to restore it. And then those things that the, the horses is called um, an equivibe. You stand on it and it stimulates the cells. But to be honest with you, you know, all that stuff costs a lot of money. Yeah. If you keep the horse on a magnesium big sky diet, <laughs> you're not going to have any problems. <laughs> you're not even going to need all that stuff, so you save money, you know. Yeah. So, so um, well, that's great. So, um so you're happy with the course? You're happy with the um, the material that was given to yes. you? Yes. Yes. And I'm glad you reference it. And so, um, so would you have any suggestions to anybody that would consider being a equine practitioner? I don't have any. I only have like Pennsylvania, and I I don't really don't have anybody like. I mean, I do have. Oh, I have a lady in Australia now. She's doing well, and one in New England. But um, just seems like they don't want to. Oh, maybe one in. I don't even have one in Virginia. They just don't turn in their case studies. You know, like you turned yours in real easy. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so it's it's the case studies weren't that hard, were they? No. Uh. -uh. That's what I say. If you got friends that have horses, um, so you can always find horses to do your case studies on um, and I mean once you practice enough it, it's so easy to do it's just unbelievable yeah you know, uh, when, what really what really trips out some of my clients is is if they're you know if their eyes aren't even and their atlas aren't even I'll show that to them and by the time I'm done, I said, okay, now you tell me if you think his eyes are even. And they'll look and they'll like, oh, my gosh, that's <laughs> unbelievable, you know. And I said, yeah, that just flips me out, too, when I see that, you know. Um, and that's, the, that's something that they can see right away, you right. know. Right. Correct. That's true. And, it's, so, um, yeah. and the horse, what about the horse? How does the horse feel? I mean, oh, the horse is great. You know, the horse is so relaxed. It's heads down. He's licking and chewing. You know, I mean, you can just see a big difference in them when you start doing them. Right. You know? Yeah, the other thing is, you know, even though I've been doing this for about over 12 years now, I still get surprised. I didn't know if yeah. you knew that. And um, <laughs> I don't know if you've ever check the TMJ points? Have you checked those yet? I don't no. I didn't do it on the video. I think I showed you when I was down at Dixie's. But you know, you go to their temple to see if they have TMJ and you push in and their head uh -huh. goes and that's usually caused by um, licking the salt, the, the the hard rock salts, you know, the yeah. the salt blocks. And right. and maybe cribbing. And so so when you check them, I'll have to do a video on it so I can show you guys. But it's like right here on the temples, and they'll go straight up. And sometimes that means their their teeth need done too. But then if you go check their their hawk points, you know, in the back, that shows you what their teeth one is. You know, inside hawk, outside hawk, and then both together right. is teeth. Um, then that will buckle too. So that's pretty amazing when they have the TMJ. But what I found is when I open them with the tail. Uh, release, I go back and the TMJ is gone. So I'm like, whoa. Okay. You know, so that, that was a big surprise to me this year, you know. So that tail, that tail um, method, it really does a lot more than what we think. 
So, yeah. but you can also put the lightweight patches on there and the oils too. But right. I was playing around. This lady had a whole barn of horses. They all had, you know, they were all rearing for that. And I told Missy, I said, take some pictures. I said, because I bet you this tail pool gets rid of that, you know. And so that was pretty ex exciting for me. So um, I'm always learning, you know, and I'm glad yeah. you're always learning. I always want yeah. my practitioners to go beyond, do more than just the equine pain point. Because the more you have in your arsenal, the better you are to help the horse and the owner. Right, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just missed a Reiki class. Um, I was going to do a Reiki class uh, actually yesterday, but I had an emergency come up and I wasn't able to go. So I am looking into doing Reiki too. Okay. Well, Reiki's good. I'm a Reiki practitioner. I'm a master. And I have, I think I have all my... I might have given all my books to my girlfriend, but I might have like one or two. I might be able to maybe mm -hmm. let you have for like ten dollars for the printing, you know, so you can get a feel of it. But um, that's great. Reiki's good. I like uh, learning all kinds of things on the horses, you know. And I like you doing that too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the more knowledge I have, the better off I'll be. So. Well, the better off horses will be, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I mean, it's, been, um, it's been a good career choice for you to become an equine practitioner? What was that again? I'm sorry. I said it's been a good career choice for you? Yes. Um, it, it has. I mean, I've been a dog groomer for the last 26 years, um, and I'm always learning with the dogs, too. But uh, like I said, I always loved horses. And I always wanted to do something for the horses. And like I said, I found found you, and it's been great. great. I love it. Okay. Well, thank you for your time, Rhonda. You're and welcome. Thank you. Learning. And you keep on um, helping those horses out there. I really, really appreciate it. I know a lot of people think, like, I have I have an equine practitioner. She's, like, right down the street from me. But she's, she's doing... Mostly the little shows, but I'm so busy on the weekends giving workshops and training people that I don't have time to do a lot of the little ones. So she's, I don't care as long as horses are being helped. That's all. Right. And, and hopefully staying out of the slaughterhouses because yeah. I'm sure you've run across horses that the people were so frustrated with they didn't know what else to do. Yeah. And they kept. Probably you probably like saw like twenty saddles and twenty bits and all it was was the withers and probably the right. front shoulder and the neck and then they were able to ride their horse again. Has that happened to you? Uh, yes, I had uh, at least two of them that were like that. Yeah, um, I had a little uh, a little paint pony, I guess, in between paint or uh, horse and pony size, um, and the girl just seemed. You know, he just started bucking on her and, and stuff like that. And uh, I went over and, yeah, did the did the withers and the shoulders and that. And he seemed to be great. And she said she really hasn't had a problem with him since then. So. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. That would make my heart just sing. I mean, it just, it has to make you feel good. It does. It does, yes. Because then yeah. they're like, well, can you come back out? him again and I said well yeah I'll come out and check him again you know so good good yeah my I, I only see my clients like once a year or maybe once every other year <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but as long as they're on the big sky I never see them <laughs> so. right. I, I have customers on big sky but they still want me to come out and check them so that's good you know no More problem than, yeah you know. so that's good why well, thank you for your time and okay. um Rhonda Royer, and you're out of. Let everybody know where you're out of. Do you, you don't have? A, do you have a website? Um, I have a Facebook page called Gray Horse Body Works, right. um, and you can find me on there. And I serve York County, Lancaster County, parts of Northern Maryland. Um, so I'm in the Pennsylvania area, the southeastern Pennsylvania area. Okay, so people know where to locate you at. Well, that's great. That's fantastic. Well, thank you for your time. And have a great evening. Yes, you too.